Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I, Keshwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GMAT. We have been solving GMAT math problems out of this book here GMAT Review, the official guide, the 13th edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. The book contains 230 problem solving questions. It has 174 data sufficiency questions. We have already solved every single math problem from the book. If you are interested in watching any of the original solutions to the problems, you will find the original solutions from day number 1 through 250. Right now we are in the process of redoing the problems and we are on page number 176. Please turn to it. Page number 176, the very first problem on the page, number 167. Problem number 167 is already on the blackboard. We are told that Jack is now 14 years older than Bill. They go on to tell us that in 10 years time, Jack will be twice as old as Bill. And the question simply is, how old will Jack be in 5 years time? Let's see what we can do. Let's see what we can do. Let's use, let's use letter J. Let's use letter J to represent Jack's present age. His current age. Similarly, we will use B to represent Bill's present age. Let's see what the first sentence tells us. Let's see if we can get an equation out of the first sentence. The first sentence tells us that Jack is now, Jack is now, which is which is our J here, that is Jack's present age, is 14 years older, 14 years older than Bill. So whatever Bill is, whatever the Bill's age is, Jack is going to be 14 more than that. So that's the first equation. That was quite straightforward. Now let's see what we can do in the second equation. In the second equation we're dealing with in 10 years time. In 10 years time, ask, let's ask ourselves in 10 years time, how old will Jack be if Jack's current age is J? If Jack is J years old today, then in 10 years from now, he'll be J plus 10. What about Bill? If Bill, if Bill's current age is B years, if Bill's current age is B years, again, in 10 years time, B will also be 10 more than what he is today. B plus 10, obviously. And we are told at that point in time, we are told, that Jack's age at that time, Jack will be twice as old as Bill will be then. Well, Bill's age is right here, B plus 10. So, so Jack is going to be two times as much. That's all. We have two independent equations. It's very straightforward procedure now. We have the J here, J equals B plus 14. We can put it right here and solve for G, J, so solve for one of the two variables and solve for the other one. Let's, let's get going. So J equals B plus 14, let's put it in here. J equals B plus 14 plus 10 equals, keep the two separate, equals 2 times B plus 20. And this is, this is simply B plus 14 plus 10, this is B plus 24. So B plus 24 equals 2B plus 20. Let's bring all the b's on one side and all the all the numbers on the other side. Let's subtract. This is the positive b. Let's subtract b from both sides, and let's subtract 20 from this side. We subtract b from both sides. Positive b and negative b will cancel out. That was of course the bloody point. 24 minus 20 is going to give us 4, and here 2b minus a b is going to give us b, and 20 is going to cancel out b. B is 4. Bill's current age is four years. Bill Bill is now four years old, which implies which implies that Jack J, remember J represents the guy's current age. It's very important that we keep in mind, we pay attention to what is going on. This represents his current age, his present age. That's not what the question is asking. The question is asking how how old the guy will be in five years' time. Pay attention. They're asking for how how old will he be five years from now. But that J that we're about to find represents his present age. And that's going to be 14 more than this guy. We are told that he's 14 more right here. Where was it? Right here. J is B plus 14. So it's, he's going to be 18. So he's 18. Not, not he's going to be rather. He is 18 right now. And the answer to their question, how old will the guy be in five years time? In five years time, he's going to be 18 plus 5 or 23 years old. In five years time, he'll be 23 years old. Jack will be 23 years old. Let's do the next one, shall we? Number 168. 
number 168. Number 168, we are filling a swimming pool. We are filling a swimming pool. It says an empty swimming pool is being filled with water at a constant pace. Eight hours have been taken to fill three quarter, three fifth of the swimming pool. So, three fifth, three fifth of the job is done in eight hours. So, well, before we do any work at all, we should ask ourselves if three fifth takes eight hours. That obviously implies that one fifth, which is the third of the work, three fifth and one fifth. This one fifth is three one third of the work. Three fifth of the job, or rather one fifth of the job should take third of this amount, 8 over 3, 8 over 3 hours. The question is, if it took 8 hours to fill 3 fifths of the pool, how long will it take before the swimming pool is completely full? Well, in order for it to be completely full, we have to do the remaining 2 fifths. This is, this is 3 fifths. So remaining 2 fifths, if 1 fifth takes 8 over 3 hours, that implies that 2 fifths of the job, which is the, which, is the re, which is the remainder of the job, 2 fifths of the job will take two times this amount, this many hours, two times 8 over 3, two times 8 over 3, which is same as, which is same as 16 over 3 hours, which is same as 5 and 1 third hours, 5 and 1 third hour, 16 over 3 is same as 5 and 1 third hour, and that in turn is same as 5 hours, and 20 minutes. A third of an hour is 20 minutes, obviously. That's the two. That's it. Let's go on to number 169. Number 169. Number 169, we are told that a positive number, positive number x, is multiplied by 2. Is multiplied by 2. We are told that the product is divided by 3. We are further told that the positive square root, positive square root of the result equals x itself. x that we started out with, that's what we end up at the end. The question is, what's the x? So that's what we're going to do. We're going to follow the three steps and see what happens. So we're going to take a positive number, which, we, which they're calling x, a positive number x is multiplied by 2. So let's do that. Positive number x is being multiplied by 2, which means the quantity that we get is 2x. What are we supposed to do that product? Well, we take the product and we divide it by 3. The product is divided by 3. So that's what we're going to do. We take the product, we're going to divide it by 3. So far, so good. What do we do next? Step number 3, we take the positive square root of the result. Positive square root of the result is this guy right here. 2x over 3, we are told, equals x. Now what we have to understand here is that 2x over 3 can be written as square root of 2 third times x. Our job is to find out what that x is. What is this x? What number times some quantity equals the quantity itself? Think about it for a second. Think about it for a second. For example, what is suppose square root of what is suppose square root of if, if we were told if we were told that uh, that uh, a times 2 equals a, what do you suppose a would be? Can, and of course it has to be positive number, so think about positive number. Can a be 1? One? 1 times one times 2 is 2, that is the square root of 2 equals 1. Can a be, a be 3? 3 times 2 square root of 6 equals 2, or rather 3, if a is equal to 3. What, what do you suppose a must be here? What quantity times 2 will equal the square root of what quantity times 2 will equal the quantity itself. That quantity, that quantity has to be 2, 2 times 2, square root of 2 times 2, the square root of 2 times 2 equals 2. That A must be 2. Let's do one more here. 
or can we do one more? Let's do it here. If we are told that the square root of square root of p times 9 equals 9, so this is very confusing. Writing p and 9, let's change it to something else. If we are told that a times 9 equals 9, how much do you suppose a is? Square root of what quantity? The square root of what quantity equals 9? The square root of 81 equals 9. a must be 9. The square root of 9 times 9 equals 9. Of course, everybody knows the square root of 9 times 9 equals 9. How about this guy? One more. The square root of 7 times y equals 7. What? y must be 7 because square root of 7 times 7 equals 7. y must be 7. Similarly here, what's going on here is that, what's going on here is this. We're looking for square root of this quantity here. This x here has to be 2 third. 2 third would equal square root of 2 third times 2 third. The square root of 2 third, the square root of 2 third times 2 third equals 2 third. And therefore x is 2 third. Of course, when you think about it, this is now it's very obvious. Because obviously, the square root of uh, a squared is a, obviously. So, 2 thirds times 2 thirds, which is the square, the, the square of 2 thirds, which is 2 thirds squared, of course, will equal 2 thirds. That's all it is. The missing a is 2 thirds. That's all there was. I will see you tomorrow. And we'll do number 170. I want to do 170 by itself tomorrow instead of, instead of continuing here. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Bye now.